well, alert flapping, alert flapping as we're looking at today. Got this problem resolved, problem resolved, problem resolved, problem resolved. And I, I've only shown, shown it for one of my server. But if you, if I go backwards earlier on in the day, I've, I've had this enabled for loads of servers. So I'm getting all kinds of alerts and can be quite overwhelming. And there is a way you can manage that so that, you know, you're not getting on and off or problem resolved all the time on each server. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to just quickly create a trigger that goes off all the time so we can actually see it. So configuration hosts, I'm going to use this server here, go to triggers, I'm going to clone this unreachable for five minutes trigger. So let's go into that clone that and I'm just going to make it unreachable for 10 seconds. Seconds. So here we go. And here's the setting here. 10S. So no data for 10 seconds. Add. Right. Okay. So we go down to monitoring and problems. And we just say, wait a little while. We'll start seeing alerts. I'll fast forward the section of the video where we're waiting for Zabbix Q to update itself. We're just waiting for things to happen. So we should start getting some errors soon. Zabbix is updated from my change. It can take a minute. There we go, problem. Zabbix agent on 2coin.org is unreachable for 10 seconds. That will resolve like just as quick amount of time. Let's have a look at that on Slack, my Slack alert. I've conf ah, hold on. I've got it set for so very high. I've got my Slack alerts to only send when they're in disaster. So I'm just going to change the configuration on that to be disaster update okay that's another way to to choose how many alerts you get you can change the severity to say only send messages on certain types of severity and in administration users say my user i will only get slack alerts when it's disaster i could change that here we go i'm getting the alerts now there we go so problem, Zabbix agent on 2coin.org is unreachable for 10 seconds. Down the bottom here, we should get a re resolution in a few more seconds. Hasn't resolved yet. Yeah, it's resolved. Uh, and there's going to be another problem in a minute as well. Now, that's, yeah, it's, you're going to be getting problems like this, alerts all day, all the time. and you can call that alert flapping. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to reduce the frequency of alert flapping. Okay, so if I go into, let's go and look at this, this trigger that I just created. So monitoring problems and we just click this problem description here. We can go to it by pressing configuration like so. The real reason, the real, the major problem here is 10 seconds is just way too small. But if I use, um, maybe I want to know nice and quick when something's happening. So maybe that's a good thing. But maybe I also want to delay the resolution for a while. So I can use a thing called recovery expression. So instead of just, it just um, <clears throat> resolving, say after 10 seconds that everything's okay, I can say, I can just copy that and say one minute, put one minute here and one minute equals zero. Now to, re to understand this, this is saying one normally equals true and zero normally equals false. So problem, agent ping no data for 10 seconds equals true. Recovery, agent ping no data one minute equals false. So no data for one minute equals false is kind of kind of the opposite of what that meant, what I'm just saying. So, so now when I update that, 
we will have to wait up to a minute for Zabbix to update itself internally. What we should see is resolutions not happening quite so quickly after a problem. So that slows down the frequency of uh, the, the flapping. So problem resolve problem. Oh, no, there we go, resolved, 550. Okay, so we'll wait for the next problem to happen. Should be pretty quick. And then the resolution won't happen for a minute. And I'll fast forward the video. Okay, problem. Now we should get the resolution to probably at least sometime into 551 here. There we go, there's a resolve. Well, that was about a minute. I'll show you another way of doing this. Instead of having having it auto recover, we can actually turn that off by pressing none on OK event generation none. And if you do that, you should probably allow manual close as well. So that you can manually go in and close it if it's kind of saying disaster forever and ever and ever. Update. Okay, so if we go look at that again. So we might have to wait a minute for Zabbix to update itself internally. Go down to monitoring problems. Uh, so problem. Okay, so we have a new problem now. Zabbix uh, agent, of course problem and it's actually never ever going to get resolved so there we go that's that's email well that's alert flapping stopped right there for that particular trigger i'll fast i'll let that sit for two minutes and fast forward the video just to show you that uh, that uh that went off at about 552 when that's at 554 i'll show you there still is no still is no resolution Time is now 5.54, still no resolution there, let's just, just resolve that. To resolve that, I'll go into the ACK, find my head there, there it is, ACK. And I'm just going to type ACT for acknowledged. I'm going to select acknowledge, and I'm going to just select close problem, update. Okay, so it says closing here now. Slack alerts, it just says now resolved. Zabbix agent on twocoin.org is unreachable as resolved. But it's going to trigger as a problem again. So I guess you only want to resolve those problems that probably aren't going to trigger again so quickly. Okay, problem. Zabbix agent on twocoin.org. I have to manually close that one. Okay, so another way you can stop uh, flapping is to actually turn it off completely, turn off the trigger completely, but you probably don't really want to do that. Good to have the triggers. So it's disabled now. It's not enabled. All right, that's just a couple of ways to manage 